Hi everyone! Um, for the entire month of September, I have decided that I am going to be releasing videos about brushes. Um, the main reason why I am doing so is because on September 22nd, it would have been the Brush Festival in Kumano in Japan. Now, if you've been following me on social media or on my blog page, you guys would have known that I always um, go to the Brush Festival at this time of the year. But since festivities have been cancelled and traveling is not an option right now. Me talking about brushes is one way of celebrating one of the most essential tools in makeup artistry and that is the makeup brush. So for this video, I'm going to be talking about the different aspects of a makeup brush. Um, maybe you might know some information about them or you may have not, but I believe that you know, in putting this out there, this might be very helpful to those who are considering purchasing makeup brushes for the first time. First things first, this is a makeup brush. What you see here is called the handle. This part here is called the ferrule. The part that connects the ferrule to the handle is called the crimp. Now for the brush head, this part here is called as the heel. The middle part is the belly. The top portion is the point or the toe. Now for handles, they are either made of wood or plastic. Now for wood, they can be recycled wood, cherry blossom, walnut, it all depends on the brand. And um, sometimes um, the kind of wood can also increase the price of the brush. And also um, the wood handles are either lacquered or painted and that also can increase the price of a makeup brush. Next, this is called the ferrule. They serve as the bridge or the connection between the brush head and the handle. Now, ferrules are made in three types of materials, either aluminum alloy, copper, or brass. Brass is considered the strongest, and these things can also be plated according to the design sentiments of a brand. Um, one other thing also is that the ferrule is actually what keeps the brush head in place and in shape, so it's very, very important that ferrules stay in place all the time. Now what keeps the ferrule in place is actually what we call the crimp. So the standards in makeup brushes is actually the seamless crimp, that's what we have here, and the other type of crimp is the double crimp. Now it's very important that before you purchase a brush, you have to check this part out because if a brush is not well made and well crimped, this part will start to wobble. So that's a big no-no when you're purchasing brushes. When I was in Kumano in 2019, a few days before the brush festival, I was able to join the Make Your Own Brush Experience at the brush company named Koyudo. And um, I'm gonna put a link down to that blog below so that you guys can see to a certain extent how a brush is actually made. So um, just briefly to describe it, I was able to shape my own brush head, I was able to tie it and things like that. So if you're interested in how brushes are made, go check that out. For the brush head, they come in two types of material, either a synthetic fiber or a natural hair brush. Now, choosing which brush to purchase is a personal choice and it should be based on your personal belief. But in a nutshell, natural hair brushes will last longer than synthetic fibered brushes. So, these are a few examples of synthetic makeup brushes. As you can see here, they come in different sizes, shapes, and colors. But the materials of synthetic brushes are usually made out of taclon or nylon. Synthetic hair fibers are good to use for cream and liquid products. Um, cream foundations, liquid foundations, cream blushes, concealers, things like that. Liquid eyeliners, cre cre um, gel eyeliners, um, mainly because they don't suck up so much of the product. Um, the main reason why is because they don't have cuticles unlike natural hair fiber brushes. Now, there are some things that I don't like about using synthetic hair brushes. Um, one is that over time, and when you've used them, um, they get deformed. And once they get deformed, they get very, very stiff and it's very difficult to use them. Um, the other thing is that um, depending on how they have been made, um, if it has been very, very badly cut, it's very, very painful to use on the skin. Now, um, they do manage to pick up powdered products, but when they do, it's a very, very excessive amount of powder. And when you apply it on your skin, sometimes you can see streaking on it. So especially if you're using um, colored powder, you can see some streaking. So um, that's one of the issues that I have with them. 
And one other thing, because of their very stiff nature, um, when you actually put this brush on top of pressed or cake powder, you can actually start to see that they disrupt the powder and they cause so much product pickup. So um, I think it's just, you know, a different kind of application technique, but I guess it you just have to learn a different way on how to use them. But other than that, if you're able to find very well-made synthetic hair makeup brushes, they can be a good replacement for natural hair bristle brushes. Now for natural hair bristle brushes, um, there are different types of hair that is used. So it's either Kolinsky, Sable, Squirrel, Goat, Silver Fox. You might have heard all of these before, but um, I'm not gonna discuss every single one of them because I have not experienced all of them. So what I'm going to talk about are the natural hair bristle brushes that I have in my collection. So I've decided that I'm going to flip my camera over so that you guys can see the different types of um, hair much more easier and it's going to be much more easier for me to explain it because you guys can see it side by side between each other, okay? Okay, so these are the different types of natural hair makeup brushes that I have in my collection. Some of them are 13 to 14 years old, and I have one at least a year old. Now, um, I have to say that they come in different shapes and sizes and colors, as you can see, and um, they also have different uses. So um, the first type of hair that I want to talk about is Blue Squirrel makeup brushes. They are very, very soft and very, very delicate. How delicate, you want to know? Um, I actually left this brush one time inside my bag at a very bad angle. And when I removed it from my bag, it stayed at that um, position. So I had to wet the hair again so that, so that I could reshape it. So these are very, very great to use for blushes, for eyeshadow, and for powders on the face. These are very, very soft. The softest brushes that I have are made from Blue Squirrel. Next, what I have here is Gray Squirrel. Now, this is actually a Gray Squirrel and Pony Mix. Now, it's very, very similar in terms of texture and softness to the Blue Squirrel. Now, the main reason why they put Pony hair into this mix is because this is a buffing and a blending brush, so it needs more strength to be able to blend eyeshadows properly on the eyes. But I can't really see a difference in color, I have to say, for the um, gray and blue squirrel. Now, um, for these brushes, I know that these are made of squirrel brushes, but I'm just not sure what type of squirrel because before when I checked their website years ago, like I think a decade ago, all they, they just say that it's made from nat natural hair brushes. And from all my research, I've read that they're actually made from squirrel brushes. Again, they're still very, very soft and very, very delicate. Next, what I have here is a brush made from Pine Squirrel. Um, in terms of texture, it's coarser than the blue and the gray squirrel, but it's still very, very soft. So this is very resilient and great to use for blending. This is actually an eyeshadow brush, but I use this for powder. Next, what I have here are makeup brushes made of weasel hair now these are actually great brushes to use for cream and liquid products or liquid eyeshadows things like that or for concealers because it's, these types of natural hair is actually very very resilient and very very strong now these brushes here are sable mix makeup brushes now when they say sable mix i think it's a mix of not secondhand um sable hair but um seconds like you know those that are not as of good quality but even if this is a sable mix and if it might be seconds only it's actually a very very good and a very very soft um makeup brush now i actually love using this when i'm applying a very strong color on the eye this picks up a great amount of product and it also imparts a great amount of product on the eyelid I actually love this. I've had this for like 14 years, I think. Next, what I have here is a brush made from tamage hair. Now, tamage is from a cat, and this is also very, very soft, but they're also very delicate and not so strong. And the hairs from 
this um, type of animal um, is actually very, very short. So that's why they only end up using um, the hairs for this type of brush. And it's actually great to use for cream and liquid products as well. And I actually use this to blend eyeliners. Now what we have here is a pony hair. So this is actually very durable and very soft, great for blending. And I use this when I want to blend eyeshadow on the lash lines of the eye. Next, what we have here are brushes made from horse. Now, they're very, very inexpensive and they're commonly found as mixes into other makeup brushes. Um, just so that it gives them more durability. Now, these are very, very strong and some of them can be very, very coarse. That's why um, they're actually used as um, eyeball brushes. I actually use these for water-activated um, eyeshadows. I love the handles of these. Very, very cute. Now, I also have this Bajer um, makeup brush. I've had this for, I think, 14 years now. And I mainly use this for highlighters. And they're, although they look stiff here, it actually picks up the right amount of um, highlighters and it also delivers the right amount of color into the cheeks. Now the next type of makeup brush that I like to talk about are goat haired makeup brushes. Now these are the most common makeup brushes that you see in the market today, mainly because they are easy to source, they are very durable, resilient, and they're also very, very soft. Now, since because they are white hair brushes, um, depending on the brand and their marketing strategy, you can actually have them made in different colors. But this is not so widely made now because um, they try to avoid dyeing um, goat hair brushes because that alters the quality of the hairs. Now, the different types of hair grade of goat hair depends on a few things. Like one, it should be virgin hair. And two, it depends also from which part of the goat it has been sheared from. So that plays a part on the price of a makeup brush. Now, um, the most common goat hair grade that is used in makeup brushes is called Sokoho. So you see that in powder brushes, blush brushes, eyeshadow brushes, things like that. Now there's also a higher grade of goat hair that is used to make makeup brushes. It's called Sai Koho and Sai Bi Koho. Now these types of goat hair are quite um, difficult to come by. And if makeup brush companies have them at their disposal, they sell it off as limited editions. Now there was one Sai Bi Koho brush that I saw being sold online and it retailed for 40 thousand yen plus plus so that was so one makeup brush was around twenty thousand pesos or close to five hundred dollars so that's how fine and expensive some makeup brushes can be um, the most expensive makeup brush that i've seen um ever are those brushes made of kolinsky and silver fox now i don't have them here right now because i can't afford them now, the thing with natural haired makeup brushes is that you can only use virgin hair when creating a makeup brush. So the brushes that you see here are actually all the first growth of hair. Now, once it has been sheared off and that hair has grown, you cannot use that newly grown hair as a makeup brush because the tips are going to be very, very coarse. Now, I really don't know the details, but I do know that the tips of natural hair and makeup brushes are round and very, very soft and not pointy. That's the main reason why makeup brushes are very, very expensive, especially if it's made of natural haired fiber, because it actually does not hurt the skin. Okay, now that we've got that covered, um, I just forgot to mention one thing earlier. Um, hair fibers are actually mixed together to create one makeup brush, uh, mainly because, um, for example, one pure blue squirrel makeup brush is going to be very, very expensive. And since it's also very, very soft, sometimes they mix in um, different types of hair inside to make it more durable and just to keep the shape and also to bring down the price. Okay, for example, this is made of goat and synthetic fiber. This gives it more spring and it keeps it in shape. And we also have these 
stippling brushes. Now these are made of synthetic and goat fibers. And because the brushes are less dense, you don't pick up a lot of product in a brush. Now one other thing, if you've decided what type of material you want to have as a makeup brush, you have to go to the store and you have to physically feel the brush in your hand. Now you have to make sure that the brush feels good in your hand and it should feel well balanced and you're able to hold it properly. Um, it's important that you do this because if you don't, um, you may end up discarding the brush or you may end up not using the brush and it's a total waste of money. One other thing, you have to know what type of makeup person you are if you're always on the go. I think I have a video of it. I'm gonna try to see if I could insert it somewhere here. Um, there are some makeup brushes that retract and it has a casing that you just cover on top of it because that way you don't um, lose the shape of your brush head and you don't destroy it. It's such a waste of money if you just, you know, chuck a brush in your bag and you just let it be so it's very important that you always keep your brush in good shape so that you are also able to create a good makeup look now before purchasing a makeup brush it's important to know the different types of brush heads because different designs deliver different finishes for example this round shaped um, brush head will deliver a very sheer finish now a round and flat brush head like this will deliver the correct amount of color or product onto the skin. Tapered brush heads like this will enable you to create a very defined look and diffuse it at the same time. Brush heads like this will also help you blend out eyeshadow colors properly. Denser brush heads like this will help you deliver an opaque amount of product. Flat top brushes like this will also help you to layer products properly on the skin. It will help you to create light to full coverage. And pointier brushes like this will enable you to create a much more defined line on the eye or on the face. And as a final note, and the most important, um, different brushes actually work on different skin types. Now, for example, Synthetic bristled brushes like this will work on all skin types except on very, very sensitive and dry skin. Because sometimes, even if they're made of plastic and even if they're very, very soft, they can be very irritating to some people. So you, all ha you have to take note of that. You have to be very, very careful. Squirrel makeup brushes like this will work on people who have very sensitive and dry skin because they don't cling to the skin, they just glide over. It's very, very smooth. Goat hair makeup brushes is actually very good to use for people who have oily combination or normal skin because these brushes are very, very resilient and very durable so they can handle the oil that they pick up from the skin. You also have to be very careful, like for example, this is Tamage, so this is made from a cat. If you are allergic to cats, then this brush may not be for you. If you're allergic to horses, then horse hair makeup brushes are also not a good idea for you. Oh, one other thing, if you have oily skin, um, you can use Kolinsky, Sable, or Weasel because these types of hair do not absorb oil as much as um, squirrel makeup brushes. So, you know, it pays to know and to research a little bit about um, makeup brushes so that you know what will work for you. So that's it for me today. I hope that this video was insightful and helpful and hopefully it answered some of your questions about makeup brushes. And if you've been planning to become a professional makeup artist in the future, I do hope that this video also can help you become knowledgeable in the products that you're going to buy and the tools that you want to keep in your makeup kit because after all, having the right products in your kit can help you create amazing looks and enhance the experience. So if you have any more questions, please leave them down at the comments box below or send me a message and let's have a conversation about makeup brushes. So thank you so much for watching and I hope that you are having a good day wherever you are. Bye.